Welcome to Future Talk. On today's program, we're going to talk about the Maker Fair. The Maker Fair is an annual event that started in San Mateo, California in 2006. Since then, it spread to cities all around the world. It was originally organized by Make Magazine, and it focuses on do-it-yourselfers, people who like to build things on their own or together with friends. We attended this year's fair in San Mateo, and it was huge with about 1,000 exhibitors and 100,000 attendees. We have some footage from the fair, which we're going to show in just a couple of minutes, but I'd like to introduce my guest first. He is David Lang. David is part of the Maker community. He blogs for Make Magazine, which is the flagship publication of the Maker movement. He had one of the most popular exhibits at the fair, and he won three Editor's Choice Awards. His Maker project was a homemade submarine, an open source, remotely operated vehicle for underwater exploration known as Open ROV. David, welcome to the program. Great Thanks. to have you here today. Marty, thank you very much for having me. So what exactly is Maker Fair about? What is it trying to achieve? Right. So Maker Fair is this event that, like you said, started in uh, 2006 in San Mateo, and it's really a celebration of the Maker movement. So all of these people who, you know, from people who are building robots to people who are doing crafts, I, this year I saw um, origami tape artists. So it's really this diverse crowd. It's a kind of a mix of Burning Man and a science fair where you could see just about anything. But the, the, really the underlying theme is that there's all these passionate people who are interested in, in kind of making their world. And we're going to be talking more about the Maker Fair, and we're going to be talking more about your own project, which is the Open ROV. But before we do that, we have some video from the Maker Fair itself, and we're going to show that video right now. So let's roll that tape. We're here at the Maker Fair at the San Mateo Event Center. This is probably the biggest do-it-yourself fair in the world. There are over 3,000 people, many of them hobbyists, many of them professionals, just making things and bringing things they've made before. There's every kind of exotic gadget you can think of. There's tons of robots, tons of interesting vehicles, bicycles, light shows. There are probably over 100,000 people here today, and we're going to go on a tour and look at the imagination of some of the people who are producing at the Maker Fair. Let's take a look. There were both outdoor and indoor events and lots of interesting presentations. This is the innovation stage where we saw a cardboard helicopter take off and land. That's as much as I want to risk in front of a live audience. Um, but that's a flying cardboard robot. We visited the Microsoft Robotics booth where they were sponsoring a contest to see who could make the best robot using a commercially available kit provided by Microsoft. The kit includes the Kinect hardware, which is capable of tracking human motion. I spoke to Lok Tan, who was manning the booth. We're showing off our contest winners. We started a contest called Robotics at Home, uh, where we try to challenge developers to build robots that are used at home. What, what, if we gave them a robot base, what could they do with it? And we had uh, 10 finalists, and seven of them submitted the, the final, year, final projects after about three months and we picked the three winners and we just announced the three winners today. So, so Microsoft has its own robotics kit that you can buy in the store and make your own robots? Yes, correct. One of the finalists in the Microsoft competition was Todd Christel, whose robot uses the Microsoft hardware to monitor aging adults in their homes. I asked him how the machine actually works. The, the device uh, moves around the environment, it moves around their home, and uses the Kinect to monitor their body positions and categorize. So, for example, if you're in the kitchen, and he knows you're in the kitchen because he followed you in there, and you're, and you're doing things like this, he, you're working in the kitchen, as opposed to cleaning the living room. If you're sitting in the kitchen, he can log that as eating, versus sitting in the living room where you're watching television. Now, let's say you fall. He see, this device sees that, what does it do? And actually the device is always listening for the word help. And if he hears a call for help, even if he's like in night mode where he's just recharging and the person is sleeping, if they get up during the night and, and they fall, he hears help, he contacts the authorities and, and voices out 
saying, I, I know you, you're fallen, I've called the authorities and I'm coming to find you. And then it uses their voice to localize where they are and goes and finds them and sets up a two-way televideo conference with them and the caregiver so that they can be reassured and they can be assessed until the first responders arrive. One of the most popular technologies at the fair was the Arduino technology. Arduino is an open source microcontroller made by an Italian company that can serve as a brain for homemade robots. Michael Schilo is manning the Arduino booth. I asked him how the microcontrollers work. So we have here the um, Arduino programming environment and it's something that comes uh, for free with Arduino. Uh, it, it's, it's free and open source and anybody can download it and use it. And the idea is that it does require programming, which is a little intimidating to people, but it comes with a ton of examples. So you find an example that's close to what you want. For instance, if you wanted to make a motor um, to control the fan to come on and off at some interval. Well, there isn't an example that controls a motor, but there is an example that controls a light, makes a light blink on and off. So that's pretty close. You could just take that, modify it a little bit, and then you'll have your, your motor controller. Is there uh, a controller out here that we can look at just to see what it looks like? Well, this is a pretty good example. I have my Arduino microcontroller here. This is the standard uh, Arduino Uno, which right now is the most popular one that's being used. Um, and then I have it um, um, hooked up to a light sensor over here. So this device is able to measure light. And uh, I have it connected to an LED uh, that's blinking over here. <clears throat> so by modifying the program, I could have it control the blinking of this light according to how much light fell on this sensor over here. So you're basically instructing when these wires carry electricity to a target? Exactly. That's an excellent way to sum it up. Now, what we've tried to do for beginners who otherwise would have had to go through a rather painful process is, as I said, we've created many examples. And then a very simple way to take that program from your computer and cram it down into here. There's just one button that says Upload. You press that, and it goes into here. And at this point, the program is stored on the microcontroller. So you can unplug it from the computer and power it by batteries. So for instance, you can make a robot that was based on this, such as these over here. So we're using the same Arduino microcontroller, the same concept of a light sensor. There's one light sensor over there and another one over there. And instead of controlling the LED that we had over there, we're using it to control a pair of motors over here. And the program just simply compares the brightness of these two light bulbs and whichever one is brighter, it turns on the other motor, so the robot will constantly move towards light. Another very interesting technology was from Lytro Picture Evolution, which makes cameras that take pictures that can be refocused after the picture has been taken. Chris McComber gave me a demonstration. We're essentially capturing the light field, which is all the rays of light at every point in space in every direction. And that essentially is a vector set that allows us to give a whole bunch of features like refocusing and even more after you've taken the shot. So what you're seeing here is our, our web application where you can play with these pictures. This is the same experience you would get on the, your Facebook wall or if you embedded this in your blog. But as you're going through, you can see that the user is clicking on the image, allowing him to refocus. He can double click in to zoom onto the picture, refocus while he's in there. And you're seeing a wide range of shots here, whereas it zooms out, it's gonna look at this eyeball next, which is a very close up shot, obviously a macro mode, but even getting a refocusable shot across an eyeball is amazing and a lot of fun for uh, someone to click through and kind of experience. The Maker Fair was definitely a family-friendly event, and there were activities for people of all ages. They had a soldering class for children, and for younger children, they had this robot petting zoo. A lot of creations at the fair were basically whimsical, and some of them were pretty large, like this fire-breathing stegosaurus. For science fiction and fantasy fans, they also had people dressed up as characters from those realms, like this science fiction character called Warhammer. But one of the biggest crowd pleasers was this guitar player in an insulated suit playing between two electrical generators and constantly being struck by lightning.
There were all kinds of interesting vehicles, like these race cars made partially out of garbage cans. There were also bicycles of many interesting designs, like this one, and this one, and this one. And there was this colorful conveyance for carrying passengers from one part of the fair to another. There was really too much to see in just one day, but it was great fun. And if you ever get a chance to go to a maker fair, you should take it. And that was our video of the Maker Fair. So David, how did you get involved in the Maker Fair? How did you get started in this whole thing?